Hey y'all, it's Ebony, your favorite hair and wig business coach. And I am back again today with a Q&A session. I always go live on my Instagram page. If you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you're following me on Instagram. And this is basically a recording, me answering questions from that live session. It's been edited, that way you guys can just get straight to the questions and straight to the answers. If there's ever a particular question that you want to jump to check the description box down below i have each question broken up into sections and you can just click on the section that you want to watch but the question i received on my youtube was about creating content for the pre-order method so when i started my hair extension business i did start by doing the pre-order method so a lot of people do ask me um, a ton of questions about pre-orders and how i was able to do it and how they will be able to do it so first things first the pre-order method is not new it's been going on for a long time a lot of the companies you probably order from online they do pre-orders basically what it means is that basically someone comes to your website and they order something that you don't have on hand they come to your website they order something that you don't have on hand they order it in advance and then you take that money and you use it to purchase the items that are needed to either make the product or that that are needed to fulfill the product so pre-order method with hair extensions i would post hair extensions on my website and then as soon as my customer orders i take that money i order the hair extensions from my vendor my vendor sends it to me and then i send it to my customers so that's how a pre-order method will work with hair extensions um for a wig business usually all custom wigs if someone offers custom wigs 90 percent of the time they are using a pre-order method meaning that it's made to order so as soon as you place an order for the wig then the wig maker will take that money buy all of the hair or the materials needed to make the wig and then they make the wig and then ship it out so that's basically the pre-order method so the question at hand is how would you take photos to promote it if you're doing the pre-order method i think people ask that question because a lot of people believe that they can start a business with zero dollars or they can start a business just by using vendor photos promoting it bam i'm gonna do the pre-order system and that's it unfortunately well it's not unfortunate it's just the nature of business you are going to need to have your hands on the product that you are going to sell not only is it morally right you can't sell something you never experienced never touched never worn never had so you're going to need money to purchase products first to test it out to you know that's when you're going to take all of the photos of the products that you're going to sell so for instance if you wanted to do a pre-order method with wigs well you got to have photos of the wig first in order to sell it and the only way to have those photos is you had to have tested out that hair from the vendor there's no way of you can't skip the process of testing products from your vendor and a lot of people want to skip that process you can't skip it even if you purchase a vendor's list from someone that you trust you still have to test that hair you still have to test the hair out because one thing about it what i like might not be what you like and what you like might not be what my customers like and what my customers like might not be what the next person customers like so there's no way around not testing out products before you sell them so I think that's the, the, the main reason why I'm asked that question a lot. I think a lot of people, um, first of all, a lot of people, especially if you're watching YouTube videos, <laughs> they do a lot of clickbait. So in order to get you to watch the video, they might, the title might say, how I made a million dollars with only $50 or 
how I made six figures with no money. Like they use all of these clickbait titles and they just capture people all of the time and it makes people really believe that they're able to start these businesses with no money at all. Um, good morning. Thank you for your advice. I got my oils inside seven stores in Georgia and Florida. So thank you for telling not to give up. Oh, that's amazing. Congratulations. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you. How would you suggest posting? I started a new page over. Good morning. Good morning, Brittany. Okay, so when it comes to posting content, don't overthink it. I think that's the number one thing that people do they overthink. Just post. <laughs> Just post. So, for instance, let's say if I started a new wig page, which I did. I just started a new wig page on TikTok because I decided that I don't want my Everything Ebony TikTok page to be about wigs. So, I started a separate wig page on TikTok, Wigs by Ebony. And when I start posting, it's just going to be regular content. Just videos of me making wigs photos of my well tiktok you can't really post photos unless it's in a slide <laughs> uh hey jasmine so it's just regular content don't overthink it if you're selling wigs then the content that you need to post you need to post videos of wigs maybe videos of you making the wigs videos of you styling the wigs before and afters um styling install videos you know just <laughs> cute pictures of people wearing the wigs just stuff that people want to see your content should always answer questions that people have so for instance um what's a question i get a lot people always ask me if my wigs are glueless <laughs> It doesn't matter if I write it in a description box. It doesn't matter if I, um, if that's the actual name on my wig page. People are always going to ask, are my wigs glueless? Well, you can create content to answer that question. So you can um, have a wig on in a video and then just lift your wig up and off. Bam. Video content that answers the question, are the wigs glueless? Show them, you know. Seeing is believing. Well, to be honest, in this day and age, you can't really believe what you see because with AI and the way technology is, <laughs> anything can be fake. But besides that, um, loving the fit, thank you. Besides that, um, yeah, answer questions. People want to know if your curly hair was straightened then record a video of you straightening in the curly hair or the curly wigs or people want to know how much parting space it is record a video showing the parting space on the closure wig on the frontal wig so a lot of your content is going to answer questions but also it should answer concerns that people have as well so what are some concerns that people have they are concerned that their wig might slide off so maybe you can post a video of you outside in the wind. It's been super windy lately. So you outside, the wind is just blowing and your wig is staying on. It's not moving. It's not going anywhere. Um, what's another concern? Another because people are concerned that their wigs may look too wiggy. So you could post a video, a tutorial, go live. And show them how to make a wig look realistic. How to make it look more like scalp. Um, some people are concerned they can't cut the lace on the wig. So you can post a video showing people how to cut the lace on the wig. So a lot of your content you need to post. Um, of course you're going to be posting the products or services that you offer. But also a lot of your content can answer questions. It can answer questions that people have. It can address concerns or pain points that your target audience may have. But just post. Don't overthink it. A lot of people overthinking and overthinking cause people to not post at all. And what you post is all about your goals too. Like, what are your business goals? Every month you want to have some sort of goal for your business. If you're a brand new business, maybe you want to build awareness. 
maybe you want to focus on people understanding your brand your brand values what your brand offers so you might create a month worth of content of just introducing people to your brand and what you stand for um who you are what you represent why you decided to start your company like building that awareness so that people instantly know like okay this is ebony and this is what she makes she makes custom wigs and she makes custom wigs because of x y and z i'm a hairstylist so i sell wigs to my customers i want to get my wigs out here to the world i definitely overthink i'm a hairstylist i want to sell my wigs to customers I want to get my wigs out here to the world. Yeah, so your main focus, even with you being a hairstylist, if your main focus is wigs, then just only focus wigs. Don't even worry about, like, I know hairstylists are multi-talented and very gifted. So some hairstylists, they might do braids, sew-ins, quick weaves, tape-ins, like everything. If your main focus is growing the wig business, then only post wig-related content. Because sometimes people get confused on what they should post if they're multi-talented. It's just always going to be based on the goals that you have. So if the goal is to grow the wig business, then focus on posting the wig related content. Just to give y'all a side-by-side -side comparison, this is an extra large and <laughs> this is an extra small. Hold on, let me take the thing off. because <laughs> they was kind of looking the same size hold on turn it to the side you see the difference from the side this one is way bigger in the back that's a big old head let me stop <laughs> let me stop there's a huge difference in the sizes here so size makes a huge difference with a wig filling um not filling but with a wig fitting glueless okay um hey ebony i have a wig question how many different type of styles do you drop on a wig restock my wig restocks are so random um sometimes i'm only restocking one wig sometimes i'm restocking 15. Uh, sometimes i'm restocking only one size all the wigs might be a size large sometimes they're all a medium um for me ready to ship wigs because those are the only wigs that get restocked ready to ship wigs are like a um what do i want to call it i can't think of the word i want to say i don't know why i want to say free fall what, what in the world is a free fall <laughs> ready to ship wigs are when I'm allowed to just be as creative as I want to be. For me, that's how my ready to ship wigs are. It's just random. Like, it's whatever I felt like making. That's what's going to be the ready to ship wigs. And however many wigs I had the time to make. Because I do prioritize my custom wigs. So anytime somebody orders a custom wig. Any ready to ship wig that I was working on. is going to get pushed back. So, um, let me go back to the question. How many different type of styles do you drop? Yeah. Um, like recently I just added some ready to ship wigs and it's only deep wave, just a 20 inch deep wave wig, one small, one medium, one large. That's it. So it's really up to you, um, how you want to do the ready to ship, but there's no method to my madness. Freestyle. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> Look, I couldn't think of that word for nothing. Yes, ready to ship wigs are freestyle. Do wigs still look good the same on a bald head? Absolutely. No one would know. No one would know um, that someone has a bald head under their wig. No one would know. Wigs would probably be easier on a bald head, to be honest. They're going to fit better. You don't have to worry about it being lumpy and bumpy because your braids all over the place. Do you feel like wigs are more popular or bundles? Oh, somebody asked this question on the last live. And it's a really good question. 
And it's hard to answer. It's really hard to answer. I think with the hair and wig industry, the hair industry in general, all things are popular. All things are popular. Nothing really goes out of style. It doesn't. The beauty industry is a billion, a multi-billion dollar industry. And it just, it never goes out of style. Like if you go to a, a beauty supply store right now, you're still going to see crochet stuff. You're still going to see synthetic hair. You're still going to see premium wig, uh, not premium wig, premium blend hair. You're still going to see hair behind the counter. Even though virgin hair and raw hair is the move and has been the move for years now, they're still selling lower quality hair. It's not, and they're not, they're never going to stop selling it. Never going to stop selling it. Could, why? Because all of it sells. All of it can make you millions of dollars. So I don't really think one is more popular than the other. People like what they like. And then also when it comes to the beauty industry, you have generations of people that are just stuck. They're stuck in their generation. So for instance, it's still older women out here still getting French rolls, updos. <laughs> And they're going to always get those hairstyles because they're stuck. They're stuck in that era of hairstyles. And they're going to always get the same hairstyle for the rest of their life. Some people are just stuck. It's kind of like with clothes. Clothes are kind of the same way. Kind of um, like, I keep saying kind of like, kind of like, kind of like. Kinda like. <laughs> People from my generation, we wear skinny jeans and we will likely never stop wearing skinny jeans. That's how people know our generation. They can identify us because we wear skinny jeans. So it's the same way with hair. Um, hairstyles and stuff, they never really go out of style. And then trends always repeat themselves. So it's never really what's popular it's really about what you're gonna push the most in your business so if you're trying to figure out what's gonna bring you the most money whatever you promote the most is gonna bring you the most money but also another thing you want to take into consideration is your target audience so a target audience is a group of people that you're going to target in your business but this group of people, they all have similar characteristics. They have shared characteristics and buying patterns, patterns in general, behaviors in general. They are very similar. So based on your target audience, you will have to figure out, do they wear wigs more or do they wear bundles more? Or do they wear both? And it just really doesn't matter to them. It's just all based on your target audience. So, for instance, um, if you're starting a business and you're starting a business uh, with women who have natural hair that love their natural hair, because everybody don't like their natural hair. If you was targeting women who don't like their natural hair, then they likely want wigs so that the wigs can completely cover their hair and none of their hair is left out. Or if you're targeting women with natural hair that have maybe like hair damage, then they probably want to wear wigs so none of their hair is left out. That way they can grow their hair. But if you're targeting natural women with natural hair who love their natural hair, then you're going to sell more bundles, more um, clip-ins, um, more tape-ins, more half wigs because they're going to actually want some of their hair out they love their hair maybe they just want it to look longer you know maybe they just want their hair to look fuller but they're going to actually wear their real hair out so it's really based on your target audience knowing exactly who you're going to target niche down on it have a clear a clear image of the type of person that you're marketing your business to and then based on who they are you match up the perfect product or service to to that group of people does that make sense?
that's why the more specific you can be when it comes to having a target audience, the better. Because if you're just targeting all women with natural hair, they could like anything. They could like braids, sew-ins, quick weaves, clip-ins. They could like almost anything. But the more specific you get, the more you can pinpoint exactly what they want. Let's see. I want to sell hair, but I don't know how it's going to go. And I'm not sure if I want to sell both right now. It's going to go well. It is going to go well. Whatever you set your mind to is going to happen gonna happen whatever you focus on the, the most is gonna grow so don't worry too much about it the more you worry the more things are not gonna go your way so remain optimistic create a plan put your plan on paper because the more you create a plan and the more you put it on paper the more you can see it the more you can visualize it the more it seems real and the more positive energy you're gonna put towards it and the greater chance of it actually coming true and happening, you know? Like, I'm the type of person, once I break down some numbers, it's like, oh yeah, I can definitely do this. Like, for example, um, making $100,000 a year. If you never made $100,000 a year, that can sound very challenging. Like, how in the hell am I gonna make $100,000 this year? How am I gonna do it? <laughs> I've never made it before that's scary i don't know if it's possible but when you break it down and realize it's only 297 roughly 297 dollars a day right then you're like oh this is more doable this is more realistic especially when you write it down on paper you're like oh this is more realistic now even if you're telling yourself this is not realistic at all 279 dollars a day this is not realistic at all is it 279 why i'm saying that is it 275 what is it <laughs> i can't even think about what the actual number is but even if you feel like it's not realistic when you break it down you might realize oh all i gotta do is sell one bundle deal all i gotta do is sell one wig just one wig a day one wig then it's very possible especially if you have a thousand followers out of a thousand people, I just need one person to purchase one wig. And then it's even more possible if you got 10,000 people following you. 10,000 people, just one person you need to convert a day. One person, just one person. You see how realistic it becomes? So you really want to put it down on paper. Put it down on paper, break your goals down. The more realistic they become, the more you feel like it's actually going to happen. And the more you feel like it's going to happen and you focus on it happening, it's going to happen. That's just how the, the world was set up. Universal laws. Universal laws. You can't alter universal laws. Universal laws are in place for a reason. It's kind of like the law of gravity. That's a universal law. If I throw this hair bundle up, whether I believe it's going to come down or not, it's going to come down. Like, it's a universal law. You can't alter it. If I throw this up, it's not going to stay up. I can't alter the universal law. The law says what goes up must come down. So it's the same way with your thoughts. If you want to attract good things into your life, if you remain positive and put positive emotion behind it and if you can visualize it in your mind then a universal law says it's going to happen it's going to come into your life you got to keep at it so it's gonna happen that's why people create vision boards because it goes hand in hand with a universal law that's why people write stuff down in black or blue ink. It's going to happen. It's a universal law. It's just how God created the earth. So it's going to go amazing for you. Okay, so I post on my personal page, but I don't post on my business page because I didn't get my LLC yet. You do not need an LLC to have social media pages for a business. <clears throat> um, you do not need an LLC to have a social media page. 
Uh, most people, they go ahead and they... Most people go ahead and they secure all social media pages first. They secure the website first before they register the business name. Because the last thing you want to do is register a business name and the name is already taken on social media. Or somebody's already using that name, already trademarked that name. Um, they already own the website for the name. So usually that's a part of the process when you're finding a name for your business. You secure all of that first. And you don't need an LLC to start posting. You don't need an LLC to start posting. Technically, you need your business registered before you start accepting money. Technically. Because as soon as you start accepting money, then you're in business. And the government feels like they need to track it. Because they're going to want to get their portion of the cut. Okay? Technically. <laughs> Now, how many people actually follow the rules? <laughs> but I'm going to always tell y'all to do business the legal way. So I always get it set up, you know, before you start accepting money, make sure that business is registered. But who knows that you accepted $200 in cash from homegirl down the street? Like nobody would know that. <laughs> Nobody would know that. <laughs> um, but no, to, to have a social media page, you do not need to have a business register. Usually that comes after. Um, no, th th this is the thing. This is the thing. And I understand your concern too. You don't want to put your business name out there yet because you feel like if you put your business name out there yet before your business is registered, somebody's going to steal it. They're going to be like, oh my gosh, this is a really good name. Let me go ahead and register it before such and such register the name, right? So I, I understand it, but this is the deal. No one is going to register a name that's already taken or already in use because it's going to cause way too much stress. So for instance, um, let's say Walmart wasn't registered or nothing like that. Let's say Walmart just opened Let's say Walmart plans to open up today. Like today is going to be the first day that Walmart is open, established, X, Y, and Z. And they're going to open up under the name Walmart. Well, here's the deal. Let's say before they started their business, I have a social media page and my social media page is Walmart. I own Walmart.com. So for Walmart to go and open up today and to get their business registered or... Um, to register the name walmart.com that does not give them rights to my social media page and that does not give them rights to the website that i own if walmart is going to want the instagram page walmart and if walmart is going to want the website walmart.com they are going to have to pay me for it and no business wants to do that. They don't want to have to pay somebody else for the domain name. They don't want to have to pay somebody else for the social media handle. They have no control over social media or they have no control over the actual website handle. So any business owner, before they register their name, they usually go ahead and secure the social media pages first. That way they don't have to run into that problem or that issue to where they're going to have to dish out way more money just so that they can get those items for their business. Does that make sense? Like for instance, um, I guess I could have used myself as an example. My business is everything Ebony. I, when I buy my website handle, I buy the correct spelling and the incorrect spelling of my name. So my name is E-B-O-N-I. But a lot of people might spell it E-B-O-N-Y. Well, somebody decided they wanted to start a business called Everything Ebony with the Y. And then going to write me and send me an email ask me if I can let them have the website. Absolutely not. The business names that you could possibly come up with, somebody has come up with it before. A lot of times, that's where we go wrong. We think that, first of all, this is my belief. My belief is that God gives us all of our ideas, our amazing ideas. When you do not act 
on an idea that God gives you. And if you sit on it, God gives that idea to someone else. And it happens all of the time. It's, it's happened to me before. You have an amazing idea, but you fail to act on it. God's going to give that idea to someone else. God's going to give that business name to someone else. God is going to give that business plan to someone else. Someone else that's going to take action on it. So whenever you come out with like a good business name, you have a good idea. It came to you at that time for a reason. You might not understand the reason. You might not know the reason. You might not understand the importance of it. But thoughts don't just come to you for no reason. There's no such thing as a, a random thought. No such thing as a random thought. No such thing as a random thought. You came in, how do you came into alignment with a certain frequency and that is how the thought came to you. The thoughts are just floating around in air. Like we can't see it, but there's so many amazing thoughts and ideas. They're just floating around in the air. They don't come to us unless we align or we come up to that level of frequency. So you might be thinking like, oh, I got a good business name. I'm going to get this registered in two months from now. And I guarantee you one day short of two months, somebody else, gonna, they going to have the name. Everything's going to be registered. You're going to be back in square one. So I see it happen all the time. <laughs> it's happened to me. I see it. It's happened to me. So but yeah, if you want to start a hair in the wig business, definitely start them. There's always enough room. Never feel like it's not enough room for you. To be honest, it's almost a good time to start. Believe it or not, a lot of hair vendors are lowering their prices. I don't know what's going on in the economy because I don't be keeping up with it. A lot of vendors, their prices are about to get lower. So as you guys know, um, during, y'all know, um, 2019, 2020, y'all know what was going on in the world. Especially in the business world, a lot of prices increased by a ton. Prices are starting to drop now. Prices are starting to drop. So it's really a perfect time to get back into the industry. I don't know if it's for all industries. I just noticed it with the hair industry right now. Prices are dropping. Prices are going back to normal. You know what? I'm talking about I don't keep up with the economy. Probably because people can't afford all this stuff now. These house prices, apartment prices, food prices, gas, just everything just, just ridiculous. That's what's happening. People can't afford stuff. And I think these vendors are starting to realize we need to drop these prices if we want to make continue to make money. Um, love your braids. Thank you. Thank you. Do you see yourself branching out from the hair industry? Yes. Yes. I think I will always be a part of the hair industry. In some way, shape or form. Like even if I was to retire from, even if I was to retire from making wigs, I think I would still teach. Like I feel like I would still be connected to the hair industry in some, some way. But yeah, I see myself branching out. I have a ton of interest. I think the next interest that I will, um, The next interest that I would move forward with would probably be something plant related. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. I love plants. I have a whole balcony garden. I even have a Facebook group called Together We Garden where a ton of beginner gardeners, we get together and we learn how to garden together. So like this weekend, we are learning, we did a, um, I did a poll in a group 
and I listed 10 different things that people could want to grow and they made a vote and potatoes and strawberries got the most votes. So this weekend we all are going to start growing potatoes and strawberries together. I'm so excited. So it will probably do be something plant related. I don't know exactly what it is. I don't know if it's going to be an ebook on how to, I don't know, balcony garden for beginners or maybe i'll grow pots or maybe i'll i'll sell not grow pots <laughs> sell pots maybe i'll sell plants who knows but i definitely feel like it's gonna be garden or plant related because i love plants so you'll see like a lot of your favorite wig makers they're teaching now they've retired they're teaching they're teaching for a reason one it's a ton it's way more money in teaching than it is in selling products it don't matter what industry you're in there's way more money in teaching than it is in selling actual products and it's easier like if you create a course you create that course that one time and you can make money off of it for the rest of your life if you make a book you create that book one time, you make money off of it for the rest of your life. So it's kind of smarter too. But um, you will see a lot of people that's in the hair and wig industry, they're out. Like they might stay in it for two, five, 10, 15 years, they're out. Um, unless they're hairstylists, because a lot of hairstylists, um, they're behind the chair and they do that for the rest of their life. They might do it for 20 years and retire, you know? But um, you will see that a lot. And it's really because of the stress and it goes back to like i say it's a lack of education from our customer base not my customers thank god i've been blessed to have amazing understanding customers but it could be stressful having to, to deal with certain things all of the time it's just very stressful <laughs> very stressful did you self-teach yourself how to use a sewing machine to make the units? I don't know where to start with that. So yeah, I do have an online course. Uh, did you enroll into my free training? I have a free wig training. I decided to just keep the free tr wig training up forever. At this point, it's gonna be up forever. The training happens every Thursday. Is today Thursday? So that, yeah, today is Thursday. So it's a free training happening every Thursday definitely get into my free training you can access it through the link in my bio um and i teach you how to get started with using your sewing machine if you have no sewing machine experience the things that you can do to get started today to answer your question yes um i did teach myself how to use a sewing machine i did teach myself how to use um use wigs as far as the sewing machine I learned how to use a sewing machine. I was in elementary school. What happened was I was in an after school program. It was called Team Up Here. I don't know if y'all had Team Up. It could have been a different name. But I was in elementary, we had Team Up. And in Team Up, they always allowed us to do different things. I was in chorus, um, I was in modeling, I, like a lot of different activities. There was this one particular time they had us doing cheerleading. I didn't, I'm just not a cheerleader type of girl just never been so those who didn't want to do cheerleading we had to go with this one lady she was an older white lady she smoked a lot i do not remember her name i wish i remember her name <laughs> i just know she smoked a whole pack of cigarettes watching us at school i can't believe that was even allowed she would be smoking a whole pack of cigarettes at school but anyways she taught us how to sew she had got this felt fabric she had needle and thread and she taught us how to stitch it and we created our own little pocketbooks or wallets. I don't know what you guys call it. We called it pocketbooks back then. And I was just so mind blown that I can create something like that. I went home and like I said, my mom used to sew, but I never took interest in it. So I went home and I would get my mom, um, she had this container with needles and thread and I would get my old clothes and I would cut them up and I would start hand stitching with needle and thread. So my parents realized I took interest in it. So one year for Christmas, they purchased me a sewing machine. Santa brought me a sewing machine for Christmas, <laughs> my parents. 
they didn't use sewing machines. My mom only hand stitched. Like anytime we had like clothes, um, holes in our clothes and stuff, she would just hand stitch it up and stuff. So she didn't use no sewing machine. My dad wasn't using no sewing machine. And my dad was just like, can you read? My dad literally was like, can you read? Yes, daddy, I can read. Read the manual. <laughs> My daddy used to love telling you to read something. You don't know how something works, read it. You don't know how to cook, read. Read the back of the box. My daddy was always so big on read. You know how to read. <laughs> it tripped me out. <laughs> it's cute now, now that I think back at it. Like, yes, I know how to read. <laughs> so I taught myself how to use a salt machine by reading the manual. Um, And then as far as making wigs, I kind of spoke on it earlier in the live when I started talking about how I first became interested in wigs. Um, I was eavesdropping on some friends talking about making quick weave, um, quick weaves. And then I got on YouTube and I learned how to do quick weaves. And then there's a way that you can make quick weaves removable, right? You can put um, a shower cap, but we never had shower caps in my household growing up. So we would just use plastic bags, like a Walmart plastic bag. So if you put a Walmart plastic bag on your head first, then you put the stocking clap, cap on over it, and then you glue it, you can make a removable wig. So that's when I started making wigs. And then honestly, it's just merging two skills together. If you know how to make a wig, whether it's a quick weave wig or a hand stitch, and you know how to use the sewing machine, it will just merging them both together. Instead of gluing or stitch, hand stitching tracks to a wig, you just use the sewing machine to do it. I promise you it's not hard. It may seem complex. It might seem difficult. It's just a matter of learning. Just learning. Um, and practice. Just learning what to do and practicing how to do it. I always fall short on the measurements. The wig will be tight and don't fit. Yeah, so with measurements, now that is not something I cover in the free training, but the free training is very helpful for anybody that's a beginner, oh, excuse me, and wanna get started today. The free training is, is amazing for beginners. Anybody who just don't know where to start and they wanna get started today with a custom wig business. Um, but as far as the, the measurements, that's more, um that would be next level so not beginner level but that would be next level as a beginner when i first started making wigs i didn't do any wigs based off of measurements i did one size fits all wigs so that would be the wig cap that has the adjustable straps to where you can make the wig tighter or looser so start there if you do not understand measurements and you want to sell wigs Start making wigs on the one size fits all caps that are adjustable. How many lines would you use for a bob? Two bundles? Okay. Oh, how many how many bundles would you use for a bob? Two? Two bundles, unless it's an extra large cap, then you need three. Cause a extra large wig cap is a lot more cap to cover and you're gonna run out of bundles. You're going to run out of hair to cover the entire cap. So two bundles, unless it's an extra large wig cap, then you need three. Oh, guidelines. You draw the same number of guidelines on all wigs. It doesn't matter the style of the wig. It's the same amount of guidelines. And the guidelines, I want to say they matter, but they don't. The guidelines are just to make sure that you're stitching in a straight line across your wig or in a curved line. It makes sure that your wig is going to be balanced, that you're not stitching a lot of hair on one side and then a little bit of hair on the other side and it's lopsided. So the guidelines are just making sure your stitches are, are even and equal on both sides. You can stitch in between guidelines. You don't have to always stitch on the guidelines. And that's all wig making is, to be honest. You just gotta learn how to stitch eight to 12 lines. That's it. 
eight to twelve, eight to twelve lines. That's it. You can stitch one line, you can stitch twelve. <laughs> And all this stuff, it's just repetition. Like once you learn it and you just do it over and over and over again, it sticks with you forever. Um, I always compare wig making to riding a bike. When you first learn how to ride a bike, it looks very challenging. It's like, what in the world is this? <laughs> how am I gonna ride that bike? When you first start learning to ride a bike, you're going to fall off a couple times. You're not going to be able to ride a bike perfectly the first time you try it. It's new. You got to learn how it works. Once you learn how it works, you practice. You practice, you practice, you practice until you get good at it. And then once you're good at it, once you learn how to ride a bike, you can ride a bike for the rest of your life. It's a skill that doesn't leave you.